Namaste, little spirit. I am going to read Everybody is Portland. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A Kid's Guide to Our Seven Principles by Jennifer Dant. One, every single person is important. Today, there's a stranger sitting next to Carla in math class. Carla's teacher, Mrs. Jackson, says the new girl's name is Patty. Mrs. Jackson asks the whole class to say, welcome, Patty, together, but Patty just stares at her desk. Carla remembers her own first day at the school. It was so hard to find her way around, and everyone else seemed to know each other. When the bell rings for recess, everyone puts on their jackets to go to the playground. Maya, Carol's best friend, walks past the new girl and grabs Clara's arm. Let's race to the swing, she says. Question, how do you think Patty feels about her first recess in a new school? Hmm. She's probably pretty scared, huh? Not knowing anybody. What could Clara do next to make Patty feel welcome? Clara could probably ask her if she wants to go swing with her. Huh. Make her feel happy and not alone. Jacob is standing in a long line of kids to buy apple juice in the school cafeteria. There's only one cash register open. The woman at the cash register is wearing a name tag that says Rosie. Some of the kids are rolling their eyes and muttering about how slow the line is moving. Rosie smiles at each kid and says, have a good day, when she gives them their change. But most of them walk away without answering her or smiling back. When Jacob gets to the front of the line, Rosie sighs and rubs her eyes. Have a good day, she says. Are the other kids treating Rosie like she's important? I don't think she is, or they are. Do you? What could Jacob do different that the other kids didn't? He could tell her to have a nice day and smile back, huh? That would probably make Rosie really happy. Two, we treat one another with respect. Gina's stomach ached terribly. She had a fight with her friend Louise this afternoon, and now she doesn't want to eat dinner or talk to anyone. Gina doesn't remember who got mad first, but she remembers that her face got hot and her voice got really loud, remembering the mean and unfair things L Louise said makes her mad all over again. She thinks of what she wish wishes she'd said to him and writes it down in capital letters in her diary, but she when she... <clears throat> But while she's writing, she starts to think of what she did say, and that makes her stomach hurt even more. She said, said things she didn't mean. How could Gina show Louise that she didn't make mean what she said? She could apologize, huh? Words are hurtful. Words are very hurtful. We have to be careful what we say. What could Louise do different? I could also apologize. Hmm. And maybe respond and not react. Inez, Tony, and Sandy are looking through Sandy's video games on a rainy Saturday afternoon. Tony sees a game he wants to play. Sandy tells Tony that her dad won't let her play that game until she's older. Inez makes a joke about playing baby games, and Tony laughs. Sandy wishes that her friends would talk about something else or go home and leave her alone. She's not having fun anymore. 
Do you think that Sandy's friends are treating her with respect? I don't think so. They're teasing her, making fun of her. She's trying to respect what her daddy said. What could Sandy say to them about how she feels? She could use her words and say that that's hurtful and that she's disrespecting her dad, huh? Three, we spend our whole lives learning how to be the best people we can be. What does that mean? Lily asked Maya about the necklace Maya is wearing, which has a little gold cup with a flame coming out of it. Maya explains that it's called a flaming chalice, and it's the symbol of her religion. I'm an Eurotherian universalist, she tells Lily. Lily shows Maya her earrings, which are crosses hanging from little silver hoops. My family believes that you have to get saved by Jesus to go to heaven. We believe different things, Maya answered. My family believes there are lots of ways to get to heaven. Lily's eyes grew big, but that's wrong, she said. Do you think people can believe different things without fighting? Everybody believes different, huh? We have to respect everybody's beliefs because we're all raised different. Our parents teach us different things. What could Maya say back to Lily? She could just tell them, tell Lily that she has different beliefs and she doesn't believe in Lily's beliefs. Not everybody believes the same. There's a lot of religions out there. Austin and his friend Carol, Carl are in Australia. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's start this. Let's start this one over. Austin and his friend Carl are in Austin's backyard, waiting to go to the park. It's not fair, Austin yelling at his mother, who is taking his baby sister out of her swing. You said you would take us to the park, his mom sighs. I know we're late, Austin, but I still have to dress your sister and make you guys sandwiches before we can go. Austin groans, but you promised we could go play basketball today and the other kids will be gone by the time that we get there. I know, I'm sorry, Austin's mom says. Uh, Carl taps Austin on the shoulder while her back is turned. Your mom has a lot to do. Maybe we could help her. Do you think that Carl is helping Austin to be a better person? I think he is. He's offering to help get ready so they can move, go faster, right? Go to the park faster and play basketball? What could Carl and Austin do to help Austin's mom get ready to go to the park? Maybe they could make the sandwiches or they could help the little sister get dressed. Ask the mom, what can I help you with? What can I do? I can make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Four. Together, we learn about the world and what is true. Roger holds a hose over a small plant poking through the ground. The sun is warm on his skin and reminds him of his grandmother saying that eating from the garden is like eating sunshine. Roger always thought it was a weird thing to say, but now it makes him smile. His grandmother loved working in her garden. After she died, the minister at her funeral said she was in heaven, but Roger's parents told him her body would go back to the earth. Roger wondered where she really is now. Who could Roger talk to about this question? Hmm. He could talk to his friends. He could talk to a trusted adult or somebody that he looks up to to ask him where she really is and what's happening in that area. Do you think Roger will ever know for sure where his grandmother is now? That's a good question. We all wonder sometimes where our grandparents and our parents and our dogs and our cats go when they die. We all have different beliefs in that, too.
Joey is helping his mom set the table. Cousin Bill is bringing his partner Tom over for dinner. Joey's mom says, Joey ask what... Wait. Joey's mom says... Oh, gonna start this one over too. Joey is helping his mom set the table. Cousin Bill is bringing his partner Tom over for dinner. Joey's mom says... Joey asks, what does partner mean? That means that Bill and Tom love each other and have decided to spend their lives together, like me and Daddy, she said. Bill sounds really happy, and we're happy for him, she added. Joey has known Bill his whole life and feels certain he wouldn't do anything wrong, but he has heard kids at school say mean things about men who live together. Which do you think is more true? Joey's beliefs about Bill or what the kids say? Probably Joey's beliefs because Joey has known Bill all of his life. I wouldn't. Kids sometimes don't know what they're talking about. They can be bullies. What do you think Joey could say to the other kids about Bill and Tom? He could say that they're happy and they're in love and that's all that matters. Five, everyone has the right to use their voice and be heard. Kristen has brought a backpack full of plastic animals to a sleepover. She dumps them out on the bed and calls out, I get all the cats. Hey, that's not fair, Dora answers and Leah agrees. But they're my animals, Kristen points out, so I get to choose. Shrugging, Dora says, I get the dogs then. Leah slumps down and crosses her arms. She loves cats and dogs and doesn't really feel like playing with the other animals. What about me? She thinks. Does anybody care which ones I want? Do you think Leah should ask for what she wants? She should speak up and say, hey, maybe we could share them off. Because it sounds like she has a lot of them, so they could probably share and split them up and each have a few dogs and a few cats. Maybe some horses and some cows. If she did, how do you think Dora and Krista should respond? Kristen. They should share, right? It's a sleepover. There's three girls. Gotta play all three together. Cameron is showing the other kids how her hair is so long that she can braid it all by herself. She flips her braid over her shoulder and says, Only girls with long hair are pretty. Marcus looks around at the other kids. That's not true, Marcus says. Gina is twisting one of her short, dark curls around her finger and looking down. How do you think Gina feels about what Cameron said? probably hurt her feelings, huh? Because she thinks because she has short hair that she's not pretty. But she is. Do you think Marcus used his voice in a good way? I absolutely do think that Marcus used his voice in a good way. He spoke up to tell Gina that she was she is pretty. She's beautiful. Six. Together we work to create a world that is peaceful and fair for everyone. Andy's little brother, Teddy, loves singing. He sings in the shower when he's walking to school and sometimes even softly in bed before he goes to sleep. And when he sings in the school concert, he has a big smile on his face. Andy's friends call Teddy a sissy and says it's weird that he would rather sing in the choir than play baseball or build forts after school. One day, Teddy cries and says, maybe I should just quit choir. Maybe then they'd stop teasing me. Oh, poor Teddy. Is it fair that Teddy is teased for liking to sing? Absolutely not. It's not fair. It's not fair at all. You have to do what makes your heart happy. You have to follow your dreams. If he likes to sing, he should sing. Maybe he doesn't like baseball. I don't like baseball. Baseball is boring. I know some people do, but to me, 
I would rather sing. Can you think of a way for Andy to help his little brother out? Andy should praise him, huh? Tell him what a great singer he is and to keep it up and to not to listen to what other people say because it's none of his business what other people say about him. He needs to do what makes his heart happy and you need to do what makes your heart happy. John has $3 in his pocket. He's on his way to buy trading cards with it. As he walks, he keeps checking to make sure the money is still there. John earned the $3 by helping his mom wash her car. He passes the church and remembers what the minister said last Sunday about the family whose house burned down on Spruce Street. The minister said that the people could give money to help that family. John doesn't know the family, but he remembered seeing a picture of two kids standing in front of their ruined house. What do you think John should do with his $3? He could take and give half of it to the family and he would still have a dollar fifty to buy his trading cards. How do, do you think it would make the kids who lost their house feel to know that people wanted to help them? That it helped make them feel good to know that people care. That people do have love in their heart for people that don't even know each other. Seven, we respect our earth and all living things. Anna and Riley have had a great day at the beach. They showed each other cool seashells, made a sandcastle, and stuck their feet in the cool, clear water. Time to go, guys, Anna's dad calls out. Anna and Riley began picking up their beach toys and towels and chairs. Riley kicks over the castle. The soda can and the old plastic fort they used for a tower and a flagpole are lying in the sand. Grab that trash, says Anna. Why? asks Riley. It was here when we got here. Why do you think Anna wants to pick up the trash? We don't want to litter our beaches if everybody left trash. Just imagine what our beautiful beaches would look like. Even if it's camping, you always want to pick up trash. Leave your campsite or your beach spot cleaner than you found it. Does it matter that someone else left the trash in the first place? It does not matter. We all need to respect Earth and take care of her. Throw your trash in the trash receptacles or recycle. Tyler has been spending the summer on his uncle's on his uncle Derek's farm. He has been helping his uncle to gather eggs from the chickens and feed the pigs. His uncle takes very good care of the animals feeding them food that they like and making sure they are healthy and comfortable. One day, Derek tells Tyler that he will eventually kill the pig for his family to eat. Tyler feels a little confused. So why, he asks, are you so nice to the pig now? Why do you think Uncle Derek takes good care of the pig? If he gives the pig loving love and kindness, the pig is happy and eating a happy pig is better than eating a sad pig? Does it matter if the pig is healthy and comfortable? I do. I feel like it does make better food if you're, it's better for you to eat because you are what you eat and if you eat a sad and neglected pig then you are getting that sad and neglected energy. So you would like, you need to eat happy animals if you're going to choose to eat animals. The end. Thank you for hanging out with me. That was fun. I hope to see you again. Peace.